What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Motorola Moto G Power 5G and going over whether or not it's a good phone to buy in 2023. Now as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about this phone, be sure to check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, Let's get into it. So with the Motorola Moto G Power 5G, we're getting a 6.5 inch 120Hz IPS LCD display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 405, and a 20x9 aspect ratio. So in pretty much every way, this display is really good. At 6.5 inches, it may not be the largest display out there, so if you're someone who prefers like a 6.8 inch display like you would have found with the Moto G Stylus 2022 for example, in that case you might be a little disappointed here, but Honestly, in general for the average user, a 6.5 inch display is plenty large enough for pretty much anything you might be doing. So if you're doing something like reading for example, or watching videos or playing games or just browsing the web or using social media, you will get a pretty good experience here. With the 20.5 by 9 aspect ratio, we're also getting a pretty tall and narrow form factor. So if you're doing something in landscape mode for example, like watching videos or looking at photos, you're going to get a nice immersive experience. Things are going to look a bit more cinematic. And then if you're doing something vertical like browsing the web, using social media, stuff like that, with a form factor like this, you can fit a good amount of content on the screen without having to scroll too much. So in general, the size and dimensions here are great. And in addition to this, we're also getting really good image quality. With the 1080p resolution, things are going to be nice and sharp and clear. So if you're doing something like watching videos where you want better image quality, if that's more important to you, then of course a 1080p display is going to be great for that. The colors and overall brightness also look pretty good. And while the viewing angles are honestly not really the best, so be aware when you're outside in the sun for example, things might not be the easiest to see here. I feel like for what it is, in a normal indoor setting at least, things are going to be at least okay. And then with the 120Hz refresh rate, the movement on the screen is a bit faster and smoother, making the phone feel a bit more premium to use. So in general, if you're looking for a more affordable device that has a really nice display, you're definitely not going to go wrong here. Now for storage, the Moto G Power 5G has 256GB of internal storage with micro SD card expansion, so definitely a lot of storage here. Now, Keep in mind, this phone in my hand is the factory unlocked version, and if and when this phone ends up being offered by US carriers, the storage might be a bit different. But again, this phone in this video is the factory unlocked version, and it does have 256GB, which is definitely a good amount of storage. And considering even at full price, this phone is really only like $299. For such an affordable device, the storage we're getting here is definitely impressive. So if you are someone who's maybe downloading a lot of apps and games and stuff like that, and storage is a bit more important to you, this phone is definitely a good choice. For security features, the Moto G Power 5G does have face unlock, as well as a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key. But let's give it a try real quick. There we go, I didn't even mean to unlock it that time. Let's try that one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, real fast and responsive. No issues at all. And again, I am glad to see we do have face unlock here too. So of course, if you want to use that instead, you always can. Now taking a look at the camera setup here, with the Moto G Power 5G, up front, we got a real nice looking hole punch design for the selfie camera. This camera is 16 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. So as far as features go, unfortunately there's no ultra wide camera here, but aside from that, we got pretty much everything else. Now honestly, I feel like not having an ultra wide camera is pretty disappointing, but considering there are plenty of other phones like this, like the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G for example, which I want to say is basically this phone's counterpart as far as Samsung goes. That phone doesn't have an ultra wide camera either and plenty of other entry level 5G phones don't for some reason. I feel like at this point in 2023, the ultra wide camera is such a common popular feature that pretty much every phone should have one, but unfortunately that's not how it is. So just keep in mind, if you do want to get those wider angle photos, you are going to want to get something else. But aside from that, I am glad to see we're getting a 50 megapixel main camera, definitely good there. And then the macro camera for close up images. But also keep in mind for video, this phone does max out at 1080 in both the rear and front cameras, so no 4K here, but honestly in this price range most phones can't record 4K videos either, so not really surprising, but if you're coming from maybe an older device for example, and you're expecting every phone at this point in 2023 to be able to record 4K videos, then just keep in mind that's not the case, and if you do want that feature, you are going to have to spend a bit more and get something higher end. Now to give you an idea of what it can do, here's some pictures taken with the Moto G Power 5G, and as you might expect from a 50 megapixel camera, the quality is really good. For a $300 phone, I am definitely impressed. 
best. Sure, on one hand, if you compare it to like a thousand dollar phone, which most people probably won't be anyway, but keep in mind if you're coming from like an older flagship phone, it might feel like a bit of a downgrade, but for pretty much anything people usually use smartphone cameras for anyway, I do think it will get the job done. For stuff like social media, for example, sending photos to friends and family, or even just taking photos for your own memories, it will definitely get the job done. So if you're looking for a more affordable smartphone that takes good photos, you're definitely not going to go wrong with this phone. When it comes to the RAM and processor, with the Moto G Power 5G, we're getting 6GB of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 930 processor. Performance wise, I was impressed overall. Keep in mind again, this is definitely more of a mid-range phone, so if you are coming from a higher end device or if you're just going to be on your phone all day especially doing more demanding activities, it might not really feel that fast to you and if you're doing stuff like high performance mobile gaming for example, then yeah in that case, you might want to get something a bit higher end that's a bit faster. But honestly for most typical daily activities, whether you're browsing the web, using social media, Media, streaming content like videos and music, or maybe playing a game or two. Regardless, I feel like for most activities like that, it will at least get the job done. And in my experience, I personally haven't had any performance issues, and things on this phone have run pretty well. Now I did run a benchmark test on this phone using Geekbench 6, and here are the results I got. So what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone, and that'll give you a better idea of where this phone stands performance-wise compared to your current device, because depending on what you have, it may or may not actually be a performance upgrade. Like I was saying before, if you're coming from maybe like a higher end device like a Samsung Galaxy S10 for example that's older but still higher end, this phone might feel like a bit of a downgrade, but if you're coming from say a Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G 2021 or some kind of mid-range phone, then chances are this phone will actually be a solid upgrade. So yeah, it really just depends on what you currently have, but again in general I feel like for daily use for most people, the performance you get with this phone will be plenty good enough. For the battery, this phone does have a really large 5000 mAh battery, and it also supports 15 watt fast charging, so definitely a great battery here. With the 5000 mAh battery, you can expect to get some real good battery life and longevity, so if you're in a situation where maybe you're not always around a charger but you still need to use your phone all day, having a phone like this that has really good battery life is going to be a great choice of course. And with 15 watt fast charging, maybe it's not the best fast charging in the world, but considering again this is like a $300 phone, and on sale and I'm sure once it gets to carriers, it's going to end up being quite a bit less. Considering this, I feel like 15 watt fast charging is definitely not bad and in my experience, the charging speed overall is pretty good so definitely not something to worry about. Now for the software, with the Moto G Power 5G, we are getting Android 13, so definitely great to see there. And while I'm not really 100% sure if this phone is going to get any major updates, I'm assuming seeing as Motorola's software support has been getting at least a bit better, it's probably going to get at least one, so if I were to guess I would say it's definitely going to get Android 14 if not 15, but again keep in mind Motorola has been a little inconsistent when it comes to software support, so they did update the Moto G Stylus 2022 from Android 11 to 12 recently, so again I I am assuming this phone is at least going to get Android 14, but if you really are concerned about software support, you might want to go with something else like a Samsung for example that is guaranteed to get like 4 years of updates, whereas with the Moto G Power 5G, again, it's probably going to get at least one major update, so if you're really only going to keep your phone for like a year or two, you should be okay here, but if you really want a safe bet when it comes to software support, this might not be the best choice, but at the end of the day, at least it does have Android 13, so if you just want the latest software and you're not really concerned about the rest, then it will at least be okay. Now when it comes to other features, one disappointing thing here is that unfortunately with the Moto G Power 5G, we are not getting NFC here, so if you like to use tap and pay, you will want to get something else. Now this is really too bad because at this point in 2023, tap and pay is becoming so common and widely used, I mean, at least in the US you're probably not going to find many stores that don't have some sort of tap and pay, so I feel like really in this day and age, having NFC in a smartphone is honestly an expectation, and I don't really know why Motorola is so behind with this because with pretty much any other 5G phone, except for maybe something like Blue that's usually behind on a bunch of things anyway, you are going to find NFC in most smartphones, so again if that is a feature that matters to you, this phone again does not have NFC. Now taking a look at the overall design, keep in mind this phone is made entirely of plastic, but despite this, the build quality does feel pretty good, albeit really not very premium, it doesn't have a ton of weight to it, so I do recommend using a case with this phone, because unlike some of the higher end devices that are made of like metal and glass and stuff like that, if you drop this phone on like concrete, it's pretty much done. So yeah, if you are in that kind of environment where you might be a little bit more prone to dropping your phone, definitely get a case, and probably a screen protector too. But aside from that, the design does look pretty nice. I also like this frosted finish, it really doesn't pick up fingerprints that badly. And again, the selfie camera looks really good, makes the phone look real nice and modern. So in general, definitely a nice design here. But in conclusion, is the Moto G Power 5G really worth buying in 2023? In general, I would definitely say yes. If you're looking for an affordable 5G phone that has really good performance, a ton of storage, a great display for consuming 
consuming content, a large battery, and a nice camera that takes really good pictures, then in general, the Moto G Power 5G is going to be a great choice. The only complaints I really have about this phone are that, first of all, again, it doesn't have NFC, which I feel like is a really big drawback, especially at this point in 2023, and also it doesn't have an ultra wide camera. Again, I feel like that feature is so common that pretty much every phone should have it, especially a mid range phone like this. But aside from that, again, I do think this is a great device that definitely is worth considering in 2023. Now, once again, if you do want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.